Hello, everybody. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the chapter six, mid chapter checkpoint. And so let's start with the vocabulary questions. We have three terms here common denominator, equivalent fractions, and factors. So a blank names the same amount. Well, same amount means equal, so equivalent fractions. A blank is a common multiple of two or more denominators. Common multiple. That would be the same denominator, so common denominator. Okay. Number three, find two equivalent fractions. Well, <clears throat> so these are technically, you could have various answers for this, depending on what you multiply two-fifths by. But I'm going to go with multiplying by two, and that gives me four-tenths. So one equivalent fraction to two-fifths is four-tenths. And I could also multiply two-fifths by three-thirds. That would give me six fifteenths. Okay. So those are the first two equivalent fractions. So <clears throat> if I multiply by four over four, I could get eight twentieths. If I multiply by five over five, I'd get ten twenty fifths, so on. So there's there's many equivalent fractions, depending on what we multiply by. All right, number four. So again, one-thirds times two over two, that would give me two-sixths. One-third times three over three, that would give me three-ninths. If I multiply by 4, it would be 4 twelfths. If I multiply by 5, it would be 5 fifteenths. On and on. 3 fourths. 3 fourths times 2 is 6 eighths. If I multiply 3 fourths by 3, I'd get 9 twelfths. Simple as that. All right, for numbers six through eight, we need to say whether they're equal or not equal. And we're gonna to try to see if they're prime. Okay, we wanna choose one of the numbers that is prime. This is not, because there's one, two, and four as a factor of four, and 12 has one, two, 12, at least more than two, right? So two thirds though is prime, because the only two factors of two are two and one, and two is not a factor of three. So, can I multiply two-thirds by something to get four-twelfths? I'm going to write a question mark there. So, three times four, that's twelve, right? All right, so that's good. I can do that. But whatever I do to the, to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator. So, I also have to multiply the top or the numerator by four. And four times two is... 8, 8 twelfths does not equal 4 twelfths. So I'm going to say not equal. All right, number 7. 5, 6 times what can give me something that ends in twelfths? 6 times 2, right? Okay. 6 times 2 is 12, and 5 times 2 is 10. So is 10 twelfths equal to 10 twelfths? Yes. So we're going to say equal. 1 fourth times what could give me something that ends in eighths, and is that equal to 4 eighths? So 
So that's my question. Four times what is eight? Two. So multiply the numerator also by two and I get two. So does two eighths equal four eighths? No. It does not equal it. Number nine, write the fraction in simplest form. All right, so six eighths. So let's list the factors of six and eight. Because to put something in simplest form, we need to divide the numerator and denominator by the same factor. If you can't make the fraction any smaller, in other words, there's only, they're both prime numbers, then we can't make it any smaller. All right, but six. So I know one and six. Two has to go into it because it's an even number. So two times three. And eight. One and eight. Two has to go into it because eight's even. Two times four. So one is in common. Two is in common. So I'm going to divide six eighths by two. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. 3 is a prime number, and 3 is not a factor of 4, so this is in simplest form. Number 10, 25 one hundredths. So let's list factors of 25, factors of 100. So I know 1 and 25. 2 won't go into it because it's not even. 3 won't go into it. Because 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 can't be divided by 3. 4. 4 won't go into it because 25 is not even. 6 won't work. I've already eliminated 2 and 3. 5 will work. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 will not work. Because 2 and 3, as I said, doesn't work. 7, 14, 21, 28. No. 9, 18, 27, no. Okay, so we only have three factors for 25 and 100. We know 1 and 100. We know 2 will work. 2 what will give me 150. Okay. 2 times 50 is 100. 3 will not work because 1 plus nothing is 1. 1 is not divisible by 3. 4 works because I can have 4 quarters. 5 and 20 also work. 6 will not work because 100 is not divisible by 3. 7, 7 times 10 is 70, 77, 84, 91, 98, no. 8, 8 times 10 is 80, 88, 96, 104, no. 9, 9 times 10 is 90. 99, 108, no. So those are the factors of 100. And now we're trying to find common factors. So the 1s are in common, the 5s are in common, and the 25 is in common. So let's divide both of these by 25. 25 divided by 25 is 1. 100 divided by 25 now, that may seem difficult, but it's really 100 pennies or a dollar divided by 25 cents. How many quarters are in a dollar? Four. Okay, and one-fourth is prime. Okay, you can't make one any smaller than that as far as um, reducing. And number 11, eight. The factors of eight and 10. Factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. And the factors of 10 are 1 and 10, 2 and 5. So 1's in common, 2's in common. So let's divide it by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 is prime. Uh, it's only factors are 1 and 5. 4 is not a factor of 5. So that's the simplest form we can have. Okay. Number 12. 
write the pair of fractions as a pair of fractions with a common denominator. So on these, we're going to find the least common multiple. So we're going to list 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, I don't have to list any for 10, right? 10 is already in common. So 3 tenths, don't have to do anything to it. 2 fifths, I have to multiply by 1, 2. I have to multiply by 2 fives, or 2 fifths, and that would give me 4 tenths. One third and three fourths. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. Oh, sorry. All right, so I just listed the first six multiples of three and four. Now let's see if there's anything in common. Three, no. Six, no, 9, no, 12. There we go. 12 is in common. Okay. So 1 third times what would give me 12s? 4. So 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 1 is 4. 3 fourths. What did they multiply the fourths by to get 12? 1, 2, 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. So our common denominator fraction pair is 4 twelfths and 9 twelfths. 258. <clears throat> Sam needs 5 sixths cup mashed bananas and 3 fourths cup mashed strawberries for a recipe. He wants to find whether he needs more bananas or more strawberries. How can he write 5 sixths and 3 fourths as a pair of fractions with a common denominator. Well, that's what we just did in numbers 12 and 13. So, 5 sixths and 3 fourths. Well, let's list the multiples of 6 and 4. I'm going to start with the smaller one. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. It doesn't matter if you start with the smaller one or the bigger one. It's just... Um, I know that I can stop as soon as the larger one matches the other one. So I just like to start with the small one. It doesn't matter. 6, 12. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. 12s match. So 5 sixths times 2 over 2 would give me 12. And 5 times 2 is 10. 3 fourths, I'd have to multiply by 1, 2, 3. Okay, 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12. So 10 twelfths and 9 twelfths. How can you write as a common denominator? Okay, so if he was doing this, it looks like he would need more mashed bananas. 15. Karen will divide her garden into equal parts. She will plant corn in eight twelfths of the garden. What is the fewest number of parts she can divide her garden into? So we want to come up with an equivalent fraction for eight twelfths that has the smallest number of parts. Okay, so we have one and twelve. 2 and 6, 3 and 4. One and 8, 2 and 4. All right, so when we look at this, 
we could reduce 8 twelfths by 1. We could reduce it by 2. Or we could reduce it by 4. Well, 4 would give us the smallest or the simplest form. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So what is the fewest number of parts she can divide her garden into? Three parts. Olivia is making scarves. Each scarf will have five rectangles, and two-fifths of the rectangles will be purple. How many purple rectangles does she need for three scarves? Okay, so what do I need? I need five rectangles. I need to know that two-fifths will be purple, and that she's making three scarves. So this is a good one to use the table. Okay. And um, we're going to have Number of scarves, one, two, three. And we're going to have rectangles that are purple over, I need to make my box bigger. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this. So it's a little, it's cleaner and uh, nicer looking. So let's do scarves, rectangles, that are purple, over total rectangles. So we're, we're basically writing this as a fraction. The number of rectangles that are purple over the total rectangles. So if I had one scarf, it would be two fifths. Okay. If I had two, I would have four rectangles that are purple out of ten. If I had three, I'd have six rectangles that are purple out of 15. Okay, so basically, if we we're just doing this as a multiplication problem, we would say two fifths times three, okay? Because every scarf is two fifths, or in that ratio of two fifths. Three times two is six, five times three is 15. So six fifteenths. Uh, wait, 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 no, no. How many purple rectangles does she need for three scarves? She needs six purple rectangles. Okay. And 17. Paul needs to buy five eighths pounds of peanuts. The scale at the store measured parts of a pound in sixteenths. What measure is equivalent to five eighths pound? Okay. So, five-eighths times something equals sixteenths. All right, so how do I, what do I have to multiply eight by to get sixteen? Eight, sixteen, two. Okay, whatever I do to the denominator, do to the numerator. Five times two, ten. So... 10 sixteenths is equivalent to 5 eighths. Okay, that is it for the mid-chapter checkpoint. I am certain you're going to do great on the quiz. So until then, may the numbers always be in your favor.